Uh, today I'm giving an update on two patients that we previously reported uh, last year at IAS. These are two individuals with long-standing HIV infection and established HIV reservoirs that underwent reduced intensity conditioning allogeneic stem cell transplantation. This is essentially bone marrow transplantation with a gentler chemotherapy before the transplantation. They also do not get total body irradiation, so they actually have residual host cells or their own cells after the conditioning regimen before they get cells from another person. Now, uh, both received donor transplants with cells that were susceptible to HIV infection. This is different from the Berlin patient who uh, was uh, transplanted with cells that had a genetic mutation that essentially rendered these cells uh, uninfectable by HIV, at least the HIV that was in his body. So our patients had uh, donor cells that were susceptible to HIV infection, but we kept them on enter enteroviral therapy, excuse me, ART or uh, therapy, throughout and after uh, transplantation to help protect those donor cells that were being infused. We now have longer-term follow-up data, up to four and a half years, uh, almost, uh, for one of our patients, so about 2.7 to 4.3 years after stem cell transplantation in the setting of on-continued antiretroviral therapy. And we have been unable, continued to be unable, to detect HIV, both from peripheral blood as well as from rectal tissue, uh, gut tissue from one patient, which is thought to be a major reservoir for HIV. Now, this is despite the use and collection of very, very large numbers of cells. So we can get very, very sensitive assays uh, when we, uh, or very low levels of detection, I guess you could say, from the, blood, from the blood. We also collect a lot of plasma so we can get very sensitive viral load assays to be done, and these are all have been negative to date. Now, because of these findings, we felt it was justified to uh, take the patients off antiretroviral therapy. So, and essentially, we do an analytical treatment interruption. We want to stop therapy and see what happens. Uh, does the virus come back? If the virus does come back, how long does it take the virus to come back, and where does it come from? So, these are questions that we were very interested in. I'm able to report to date uh, through week 8 and week 15 uh, for two of our patients, so almost four months uh, for uh, our second patient in transplant. And to, what we've done is actually uh, frequent monitoring. So every week, we look for viral load testing by commercial assays. Every other week, we look for DNA in cells. We look for evidence of infection in the cells. And then every three months, starting at six to eight weeks after treatment interruption, we take large amounts of blood uh, to do uh, very, very highly sensitive assays in our laboratory. So far to date, we have been unable to detect HIV RNA. Uh, that's viral load. So we cannot detect virus in the peripheral blood. We cannot detect uh, virus integrated into cells uh, from the peripheral blood. And at least for one patient, where we have a six-week sample for large volume collection, we've been unable to detect uh, DNA from those cells or virus in the cells. And we also have very sensitive, uh, less than one copy viral load assays from that time, which have also been negative. So what we've shown so far, that at least through week 15 for one of our patients, that there's a lack of viral rebound after the cessation of antiretroviral therapy. Now, I want to stress, and please take this, uh, this is something I really want to stress heavily, longer-term follow-up is going to be needed to understand the full impact of stem cell transplantation with susceptible cells on viral persistence and reservoir ablation. It is possible that virus could come back next week. It's possible to come back in a few months from now. And it's even possible that it could take one to two years for this virus to return in these patients. This was based on some information and some data that Bob Silicano and Allison Hill presented at the retrovirus conference uh, this year that suggested that even with a large reduction in uh, HIV reservoir that you could still potentially have rebound. So we still do not know the full implication of the findings that we have. I would like to say, though, that we have at least detected a 1 to 10,000-fold decrease in the total peripheral reservoir using the sensitive assays that we've had. Now, I also want to stress that this is not a practical strategy that we can, we can do for most people with HIV. Stem cell transplantation uh, is, is dangerous. There can be up to a 20 or more uh, percent mortality associated with transplantation in the first year or two after transplant. Now, granted, these are patients with cancer, uh, but we don't know about the risks in, in otherwise healthy or HIV-infected individuals. So it's not without risk. It's also very expensive, so it's not scalable in that situation. However, I think we can learn quite a bit of information from this type of studies or these types of patients. And first of all, what we would like to know is how low do we need to go? This is a huge question that no one knows in the cure field. What level of reduction of your reservoir do you need to do to have a lasting impact? So we're hoping that our study will help uh, shed light onto this very, very important yet completely unknown question. 
The second thing it'll let us do is it, it will let us know, is it, is it required to have these CCR5 Delta 32 or these mutant cells that are not susceptible to certain strains of HIV during transplantation? Was this solely responsible for the Berlin patient's uh, uh, lack of virus even five to six years out from transplant? Or is it the antiretroviral therapy protecting those donor cells? And finally, it will help us understand more about how the innate immune system in the body can help uh, be used to attack reservoirs or to be used to, uh, to have activity against reservoirs. Again, these donor uh, cells attacking residual host cells and clearing them out. So hopefully we can learn more about how we can design future strategies from this point onward. Uh, thank you.